Welcome to a special episode of the Cross Border Interviews. Today, we'll be jumping feet first into the exciting world of provincial politics in the beautiful province of Saskatchewan. With an election on the horizon in October of 2024, or potentially later, the political landscape is heating up as candidates from various parties begin jockeying for nominations and positioning themselves to represent their constituents at a provincial level. But what makes this election cycle particularly intriguing is, well, for at least me, the number of municipal leaders who are looking to level up and transition from local governance to provincial politics. Now today, we have the privilege of sitting down with two remarkable individuals who are taking the leap, each vying for a nomination in their respective parties in their respective ridings. Joining us first is Jamie Martins, the current deputy mayor for the vibrant city of Martinsville, nestled just north of Saskatoon. Jamie has recently announced her intention to seek the nomination for the governing Saskatchewan party in the riding of Martinsville, Blairmore. Known for her dedication to public service, Jamie aims to take her experience to the next level by representing her community at the provincial level. And now later on in the episode, we'll be having the pleasure to speak with Jordan McPhail, a passionate town councillor hailing from the scenic town of Larange, located in the northeast part of the province of Saskatchewan. Jordan is seeking the nomination for the Saskatchewan New Democratic Party, the NDP, in the Cumberland riding. With a firm belief in progressive policies, Jordan is determined to bring change and opportunity to his constituency. During this episode, we delve into the motivations behind these courageous decisions and explore what drives these municipal leaders to leave their local government positions behind in pursuit of provincial politics. We'll discover their visions for a brighter future, the challenges they anticipate, and the goals they aim to achieve. So without further ado, let's begin our first one-on-one -on -one interview with Deputy Mayor Jamie Martins, who is running for the nomination for the Saskatchewan Party, led by Premier Scott Moe. Uh, so, Jamie, I, I guess I should ask the million-dollar question. You have decided, uh, after being on council since 2012, to make the jump into provincial politics by running for the nomination for the constituency of Martinsville Blair Moore for the Saskatchewan party. Why? Well, I guess it just seems like the natural step, the next step. Um, uh, at this time, I wasn't quite sure if municipal politics, where I kind of wanted to go. I wasn't sure if I've kind of run my course. Um, love municipal politics. I love the fact that it is the nonpartisan um, way. But there was definitely something calling for just making a little bit more of a difference. Um, just making, being able to make um different decisions and of course bring forward a lot more to, to the provincial government to see what what we can do to uh to help out um saskatchewan so before we talk about some of the issues i want to i want to know what made the saskatchewan party the natural fit for jamie martins as a candidate for their party in the riding of martinsville blairmore well um i would just I would start with 100% is the collaboration. Um, so since this, uh, since the Saskatchewan party started, uh, it was liberals and conservatives that came together to collaborate in order to build uh, a new party, which was the Saskatchewan party at the time. And of course, now it has been uh, 20 years, I do believe, I think I thought it was 25, but I think it's 20. Um, and to me, that that is huge uh, for two completely different parties to come together and to and to build on one another. I think that that's uh, absolutely wonderful. And I really, truly believe that Saskatchewan Party is that center right um, type of mentality. And I think that that's kind of what we um, what we see in Saskatchewan as a whole. I do believe uh, of just Saskatchewan people are are kind of more of that center or center right just slightly. So um, I think that that's a that's a great combination. So this this is a relatively new riding, if I'm not mistaken. The boundaries are changing, and currently Martinsville Warman is the constituency. But for the next election, it's going to be Martinsville Blairmore, and it's an open seat. Um, was it an easy choice? Because I know you represent the city of Martinsville as deputy mayor to say this is my home, and I, I know the people here, and I, I know the issues that are facing the communities of Martinsville Blairmore that I'm going to run here. 
Absolutely. Uh, I had rumor, there was rumors, of course, that were floating around that when the boundaries were going to be redrawn, that Martins will be on its own. Um, and away from Mormon. And as as that was happening, I, I was getting more and more excited. And uh, and as the, the day that it came out, the boundary redraw it, and it said Martins will Blairmore, I actually, I, I had shed a tear. Um, it's something that means the world to me, uh, just because of the fact that I'm born and raised and just to hear Martinsville, you know, that ha has has its, has its own uh, uh, riding is, is something, and and of course to incorporate Dalmany, the rural areas in between, and then of course the uh, the piece of Blairmore as well in Saskatoon, which I think um, is actually a very very good move uh, uh, on the part of the boundary um, uh, commission is is that having that little bit of if Saskatoon in there will be able to have that relationship with Saskatoon City Council as well as well as Saskatoon MLA. So I think that that's that's wonderful um, wonderful combination. So you are an elected official right now in the uh, the town of the city of Martinsville. Sorry, um, it, it's a different beast. Uh, provincial politics. It, you are aligning yourself with one party. Traditionally, uh, municipalities are nonpartisan, so you work with everyone across the aisle. Do you think that gives you a leg up if you are the successful candidate in the nomination for the Saskatchewan party, that you'll be able to work with anyone who is in your riding, whether they be NDP or Saskatchewan United or Saskatchewan party? I absolutely, I absolutely believe that. Um, I being a part of a municipal politics, and of course, as well as the Federation of Canadian Municipalities, of course, we had to stay nonpartisan, and um, and of course, not show colors and and that type of thing. But I think be uh, coming forward um, with municipal experience um, and the experience, of course, going to the federal government and and discussing things with all types of government, you get such an understanding of the of how you need to work together in order to accomplish accomplish things and i think it's so important uh, for people to have that experience i think that being a municipal councillor going into um, provincial politics i think that's going to be a huge um, a huge asset and what what do you bring to the table what do you specifically bring to the table is there an issue that you're hoping to elevate a little bit more for the people of martinville blairmore for the people of your community that you don't see so so much uh prominent in today's legislature or is it just like you said being that voice for your community in the legislature what what what, what issues are you running on well, and I would uh, consider that um, I, it's there's no one issue. Um, okay. I think that yeah, I think that this area is just an absolutely wonderful area, and that uh, um, in the rural uh, part of it, I would say that there's more, of course, water wastewater um, uh, issues that would have to be addressed, and I that's a big one for me. Um, I've already kind of been working alongside. Uh, with Martinsville alongside with Saskatoon and and, of course, uh, FCM as well working on um, water and wastewater issues across Canada. So that to me is something that we we definitely need to look at, especially in the RMs. Um, but other than that, it's passion. It's I can't uh, say it enough, but it's it's the drive that it is sincerely um, such a passion. This area, it, it's Saskatchewan's a passion for me. Um, it just I feel like it's just my heart and soul. Um, it really, truly is. And and to represent my area and and to listen to the every individual that, that, you know, that needs help or, or, or um, um, of course, is advocating for something. I think that it's, it's very important to be that voice. And, and I can assure that I will 100% be that voice. What are the issues that you're hearing at the doors? Because I'm assuming you're going out right now and selling memberships, trying to get people to join the party and raise uh, some memberships so they can vote for you in the nomination meeting. But when you're talking to residents of the area and the constituency, what are they bringing forward to you? And are you shocked at some of the issues that you're hearing? Or is it traditional issues that you're hearing at the council table that you're just hearing at the provincial level now? Well, uh, in actuality, it's, it's health care, is, which is the most serious issue that's coming forward. And of course, because traditionally municipalities don't uh, take on health care, of course, that they're, they're governed, uh, they govern different things like infrastructure, infrastructure and funding and, and so on for their city. But um, to me, seeing stepping outside of that box and kind of really taking a good look at what we can do to, to um, accommodate uh, different types of health care and different and, and 
play a different role as municipality itself, I think is very, very important, uh, as well as the fact that with the, with the healthcare coming forward, I think that it, we've just been able to open our eyes across Canada um, and take a really good look at what we really truly need to do, and and possibly as a province as well. I mean, we're you know we're still at a fee for service um, model that we have here in Saskatchewan, and and uh, and I know a lot of doctors have had have advocated for, um, of course, like a a salary type based um, uh, approach. So I, I think that that's the biggest one. Um, other than that, I mean, a, a lot of times it, a lot of times there's a little bit here and there about education or just just plain and simply representation. There's, I know um, um, people with disabilities, uh, I know that they're, we're definitely hoping for more group homes, more um, more day programs, and so on. And I think that that's a that's a big a big one, um, especially since we're growing both Martinsville, of course, Dalmany, and Blairmore. I think that that's that's something that we need to take a, a good look at as well. Why do you believe that Scott Moe and the Saskatchewan Party are the best people to address, best party and best premier to address the issues of health care, best uh, uh, represent the issues of education going forward? Because we're about a year and about three months away. If there's no federal election in 2024, it will be in October of 2024, if not April of 2025. But why do you believe Scott Moe and the Saskatchewan party deserve a, another uh, chance? And uh, do you believe that they will be able to advocate and push forward on the issues of health care and education that your constituents are talking to you about? Mm -hmm. um, I absolutely believe in the Saskatchewan party line, like I stated before, just because of that collaboration piece, but also because there is absolute wisdom. Uh, there is so many people that are sitting at those tables that uh, that um, combined have such incredible knowledge. I think that it's extremely important to um, to see that. Uh, and I think that, you know, no matter what, no, you know, no government is going to be perfect. And I think that this is the time that we're going to see a lot of change coming in. I think that we're going to probably see a lot of different uh, candidates coming through um, and some new fresh ideas, which I, I can't wait to see. I think that that's going to make a big difference. Um, but I also, I just truly believe um, that they're just for the Saskatchewan people. I, I truly believe, and, and I believe that uh, that we really know what what Saskatchewan's all about. And I think that we should always embrace um, what Saskatchewan, how unique Saskatchewan people are, and what makes us unique. I, I I'm gonna ask a very weird question right now, and I apologize if it does come off a little weird because I'm I just thought of it while you were talking about that. Um, the election is a year away. Um, I'm assuming if you are the successful candidate, because I did. I tried to do my research, and I can't see if there's a nomination meeting for uh, Martinsville Blairmore yet. I know there was a founding meeting for the constituency, but I do not believe there is a nomination meeting set yet. Correct me if I'm wrong there. But okay. you will stay on as Martinsville councillor until the next election, regardless if you are the successful candidate or not successful candidate, correct? That is correct. Absolutely. So, but there is no nomination meeting as of right now. No, as of right now, there is not. Um, there's been many nomination meetings, of course, held uh, and nomination dates set for the party, but um, Martinsville Blairmore has not been set yet. So how can people join the party, support you, reach out and ask you questions if they live in Martinsville Blairmore? Because I can imagine as much as you want to try and get to every single person in the uh, constituency, it is challenging from time to time. So for those who might be listening and watching, how can people reach out and buy a membership or learn more about you? Well, anything, I, I do have an email address, of course, online, as well as my phone number is actually online and is, is my personal number. So I'm not sure if I really should say that, but yes. Um, and that's there. So anyone can get to know me that way. I, I'm holding a um, many uh, coffee dates through the summer. Um, also picnic in the parks. I'm also holding a, uh, a large car show, a uh, classic car show coming up this Sunday on Father's Day. Um, and I... Uh, so those I'm holding those events. I also held one for Mother's Day as well, a petting zoo and and barbecue and and I'm holding those events for people to come and meet me and just to see what what type of person I am. Um, I think a lot of individuals do know me, but there's still quite a few that don't, of course, uh, within Blairmore especially and and possibly Dalmany. And um, so that number one, 
uh, I think that, that that's the way they can they can reach out to discuss things with me and issues and topics. Um, and as well, they can buy a membership online or else, of course, come to me as well and, and purchase a membership from me. Um, it's $10 for the year. Uh, and then at least that gives them the opportunity to vote um, at the nomination meeting. And I think that's the only thing that I'd like to stress is uh, is how the nomination process works. And uh, of course, to be a, um, a candidate for the SAS party, you have to be a SAS party member in order to vote for me. So that's what uh, that's the only thing I stress for people if they are really considering um, supporting me to buy that membership and come out on the nomination date to to actually vote me in as the candidate. So for those who are listening, the links to uh, Jamie's uh, social media pages, but also the link to buy a membership for the Saskatchewan party will be in the show notes. So if you're listening to this, please scroll down. If you feel like you want to support Jamie, click on that link. You want to ask her a question, the links to her Twitter account and her social media pages will be there as well. Highly recommended. Uh, Jamie and I have gotten to know each other over the course of the last, I'd say, year and a half. But uh, I, I wish you all the best in uh, heading into the next year because uh, running provincially is a unique beast. And I, I, I'm rooting for you from here in Calgary. Thank you so much. Thank you. And you're right. It is a unique beast. So thank you so much. Thank you so much, Jamie. Now we are going to be turning our attention across the aisle to the Saskatchewan NDP led by Carla Beck. Let's jump into our one-on-one -on -one interview with Councillor Jordan McPhail. So, Jordan, I want to start with the big question, because you have announced that you are running to be uh, the candidate for the Saskatchewan NDP in the riding of Cumberland for the next provincial election, which is scheduled if there's no federal election in October of 2024. What made you decide to take the leap from municipal politics to provincial politics? Uh Good question. Um, <laughs> I, there, there was one thing at the uh, at, at the beginning. Uh, you said the the candidate for the Sask NDP. Uh, the nomination is actually coming up on July eighth, so I'm not the candidate yet. There's still a race to to complete and all those things going up into July eighth. Uh, until then, I'm just uh, the average Jordan trying to put my name forward for a political party here in uh, in the Cumberland uh, constituency. So, uh, for for me, the reason why I put my my name forward. Uh, in, in our writing is I've sat now as a municipal councillor since 2016. And I noticed that, you know, our municipality is, is doing pretty good at the providing the municipal services that we need. And a lot of the issues that came to me on the doorstep were not necessarily direct municipal issues. They were a lot of things that, you know, ministries of provincial government should be involved in or could be involved in. And I found that a lot of my roles were, I felt that I could be doing more on the advocacy side. And, you know, we we have SUMA conventions, which is where you and I first met. Um, we, we've we've had other opportunities to engage government and and ask questions and and try and get some results for the people that put us in our seats and and provide that level of advocacy advocacy that they want. And and for me, I didn't feel like um municipalities were being heard. At, at SUMA, I found that uh, like the, the bear pit sessions and the dialogue sessions that we would have, would we, there was lots of communities, not just LaRange, not just northern Saskatchewan communities, but communities across Saskatchewan. Um, their mayors and their councillors and their CAOs and their, their administrative staff standing up and asking questions of government and not getting the answers that they want and not seeing the results that they want. And that's the more important thing is getting the results that you wanted. So for me, um, I took the opportunity, one of uh, one of the MLAs or the, the MLA in our area, Doyle, uh, announced his retirement. And I had a conversation with my family and thought, you know what, it's it's time that uh, I, I, I feel like it's it's time for me and my family to be able to move into a, a place where maybe maybe the government will take uh, a little bit more serious the uh, the thoughts um, if I if I take on that role. And, and, you know, the, the election is, is not done. There's still lots of work ahead. Um, and in, in 2024, if, uh, whether, whether it be as a minister, as an MLA, as a critic, or maybe if the election does not go our way, uh, the, in the, in the nomination process or the general election that I just have to stay advocate 
uh, find a different path to to provide advocacy. But for me, I just feel like it was time to to take that leap and and uh, move towards a, a, the provincial seat. So provincially, you have to choose a party. And at the end of the day, you've chosen the Saskatchewan NDP to run for the candidacy for the nom- the, the nomination of the candidacy for the riding uh, the constituency of Cumberland. What was the decision based on for running for the Saskatchewan NDP or running for the nomination for the Saskatchewan NDP? I think the fundamental principles of the of the NDP is what's really dragged me into into being a part of the party. Um, you know, to me, I see the Saskatchewan NDP as a party that leaves nobody behind, that we look after the little guy, that we do what we can to build communities up and to help serve them and provide good services from from government. Um, you know, when we look at Saskatchewan as being a model of of Crown corporations, we see things like SaskTel and Sask Power, Sask Energy. A lot of these things were started by then CCF or Tommy Douglas back in the day, and 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 those ideas of of bringing new forms of revenue into into a provincial government, as well as being able to use that revenue to provide critical services um, to to the residents, is is the is the reasons why I'm looking at the Saskatchewan NDP and, and I've been a solid Saskatchewan NDP supporter and and ultimately why I put my, my why I'm putting my name forward to hopefully be able to represent the Saskatchewan NDP in the in the next election. Uh, the Saskatchewan NDP is currently led by Carla Beck. Uh, she's been in the position for uh, just over, I think, just about a year now, if I'm not mistaken, or just under a year by the time this goes out. How does... Carla Beck, uh, connect with people in the riding of uh, Cumberland? And are you hearing that her message that she is uh, talking about is resonating with the people of Cumberland? Uh, so the funny, not the funny thing, but the, the really cool thing about Cumberland is um, we've we've been very strong and loyal to the NDP for, for many years and many elections. Um, you know, Doyle, I think, has served three, maybe four elections now. Um, and and every year we you or every election we've been we've been getting a very strong mandate from the people here. And I believe it's because of people like Doyle, like the predecessors to Doyle, and people like Carla Beck and Ryan Miley throughout the throughout the years. Um and the leaders that the Saskatchewan NDP have had is we have had focus on people. And that's, that's I think, and when you look at the, the riding of Cumberland, we're small town, we are rural municipalities, we are very uh, high on Indigenous population. And, you know, the, the sense of community and taking care of one another and looking after our neighbour are things that the NDP brings into the core principles of the party. And so for me, um, I, I think that Carla and and the Saskatchewan NDP have always been a strong advocate for Northern Saskatchewan, and and another reason why I'm very happy to be a part of a party that puts people first and looks at uh, the northern parts of our province as as a place of opportunity and a place that is worthy of investment. Traditionally, uh, provincial politics is more partisan. It's the Saskatchewan Party versus the Saskatchewan NDP, the Saskatchewan United versus the Buffalo Party. How do you see your role as a current councillor benefiting you, you as potentially the candidate for the Saskatchewan NDP, but also as the next potentially MLA for the riding of Cumberland? So I think an important piece of of any level of an elected official, um, I think we talked about this in a previous interview, um, was you need to have a good sense of governance to be able to make uh, your plans a reality. Um, if if you you can talk a big talk, but if you don't have some level of methodology on how you're going to deliver that, um, that that comes from. Or you're not you're not going to be successful, and that comes from experience in that elected official role. It's very easy uh, to be the person second and third in command, and and see that there there needs to be um, there, there, there's a, a shift of a uh, uh, focus um, in in the elected official role. So for me, I believe that having that experience as a municipal councillor, uh, both as a candidate on the doorstep, 
knocking on doors, talking to people and being able to bring those messages that you hear into a solid action plan and then working to deliver on those in your term are things that I think are necessary as a candidate. And for me, um, going into a provincial nomination and if, if successful into a provincial election, being able to actually sit and go on door door knocking and, and having all of those conversations with people, that two feet in a heartbeat campaign, um, being able to get a around and talk to people, bring that message together, build a solid action plan and deliver that, whether that be as a government, as a critic, or just, you know, in, in whatever capacity that I'm able to do so, I want to be able to do that. And I've always done that by, uh, by following the basic anatomy of a human body. You have two ears and one mouth, listen twice as much as you speak. Um, so I think that having, having that uh, mentality is, is very important going into that election. And, and I think is something that I, I can bring to, to that um, atmosphere. You have probably been talking to the people of Cumberland. You've been probably reaching out and trying to find out what the issues are in the constituency, because as someone who wants to represent them, you have to start now if you are the candidate to potentially run in a provincial election. What are the issues you're hearing from for from the and I and I say this with respect because you're running for the nomination for the Saskatchewan NDP. So I'm assuming you're not going out and talking to other party members for the Saskatchewan party or the Saskatchewan United. You're talking to the members of the Saskatchewan NDP in Cumberland. What are you hearing from the members about what they want in the next MLA and what issues they want addressed if you are the successful candidate? So. Uh, regardless of whether or not uh, like the, the nomination process has wrapped up or not, I'm still a member of my community. I still go to the co-op. I still go to Coffee Row. I still do all of those things. And I and I hear the issues that people that people bring forward. And like I said um, bef before in, in, in previous interviews, you know, when we're when we're sitting at a table, the the issues were very uh, were were not unique to what they brought forward to whether you're a federal politician a provincial politician or a municipal politician as i've worked on all three levels of the campaigns when when we were knocking on doors on all three levels of those elections the issues were the same we were seeing uh you know our our healthcare workers near burnout um with with hospitals um that are are not properly staffed they're not fully staffed and we see our education system where we're um, having teacher shortages and the, the really ironic thing that I find in the in the Cumberland constituency specifically is there used to be a program here called NORTEP so Northern Teacher Education Program um, this was this was something that was started by Northerners was ran by Northerners had elected board members of Northerners providing oversight to an education system that was providing teachers directly to the school systems in Northern Saskatchewan um, it was accessible education. Students loved the, the courses. Uh, the financial burdens were far less than what, you know, universities and colleges might be able to offer. It was a really good program in Northern Saskatchewan. And I remember at the time, and, you know, don't quote me on, on exact uh, um, <laughs> exact phrases, but I believe that one of the justifications that the, the Saskatchewan party had was that there was more teachers being created than there were jobs available. Um, and that was part of the reasons why they were moving NORTEP out of NORTEP into a regional college in the area or or transferring administrative dollars. I forget exactly how they how they uh, really worded that, but effectively it killed NORTEP. Uh, and and then a few short years later, uh, even, you know, sorry, going too far. Uh, immediately after these cuts, we had those same northerners telling the government look this program is successful we 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 we're, we're having teachers that are staying in the north that are working in the north why would you cut that program and and they said like once again that there's more teachers than there are jobs available and years later we are now at a teacher shortage our northern light school division one of our one of our school divisions here in in northern saskatchewan doesn't have enough teachers year after year to be able to fill the positions. They're constantly being short-staffed. They were told that this was going to happen and they didn't listen to the people. And that's to me where 
when, when we talk about delivering for people and, and being people focused first is listening to what the people are telling you. And that's what the Saskatchewan NDP in our riding and, and, and in Saskatchewan is doing exactly that is we're listening to people. We're going around to coffee rows, to the, to, you know, small municipal rinks, uh, to first nations and reserve lands and powwows and, uh, all these pavilions and we're listening to people and their issues and the issues are not just urban uh, it's not just rural it's not just rural health care systems that are that are near near collapse with the uh, understaffing that they've had this is urban as well you know we, we see even stories of an hour-long wait time for an ambulance in a place like Regina this isn't something that is like you know you're waiting for an ambulance in some crazy rural area of 45 minutes away from even the closest gas station. This is happening in our urban centers. It's across the province. You talk about health care, and I want to stick on that for a few seconds here, because as a municipal councillor, you've seen the effects, the uh, health care collapse, and I say collapse in a, a loose term here, has had on communities like LaRange and in your constituency of Cumberland, what what does the government need to do and what do you hope to sort of advocate for when it comes to fixing the healthcare crisis that so many different communities across your constituency but also across the province are facing so one of the things that may, maybe it's that uh you know i'm i'm a i, I say i'm a younger guy i just turned 30 so I, you know I, i'm kind of in that in between where i'm still that young punk to some people and i'm maybe got a few whiskers to the 16 17 and 18 year olds in the party so i'm kind of in that little uh mid range right so uh something i think younger workers are looking for is a good culture to be involved in and i think that the, the issue that we have in Saskatchewan is that we have ministers and a premier that does not facilitate a good culture in our healthcare system. Um, you know, when when I was at SUMA in in our just our last convention here, I, I when we were having our dialogue with ministers, I went up and had a conversation or I, I asked a question and said, when when we have nurses, the Saskatchewan Union of Nurses, SEIU West, SGEU, QP, they're all asking for fair, decent wages, for good benefits, to be recognized for the hard work that they've done to get us through a pandemic. Um, the the governments are to- telling them that they're they're not able to meet their demands, right? That they're not able to 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 be able to do what the the unions are asking and and and, and the fair things that they're asking for, um, and then and then very quickly after these bargaining uh, agreements have have signed and gone through, they announce heavy investment into recruiting new. And when you talk about a culture, to me, I always say, take care of your people and they will take care of your of, of your clients, your patients. Um, and so to me, they, there was a higher focus on, on recruitment than there was retention. And to me, when you have a culture that focuses in on, re- on not just recruiting, but retaining good people, um, you won't see healthcare workers leaving our province. You'll see them coming to our province because you fostered a culture in which they want to stay, in which they want to join that workforce. You know, you talk to people that are going through nursing colleges right now, and they say that they're, they're talking to friends that are in nursing, and they're going, I don't know if I want to do that. It, it doesn't sound enjoyable, right? It doesn't sound like a career path right now. It's something that I wanted to do. And that's, to me, not because there's there isn't a forty thousand dollar signing bonus, not because there isn't, you know, a fifty thousand dollar signing bonus or an eighty thousand dollar signing bonus or a hundred or whatever the case is. It's the culture that you've created in healthcare, and I think that that's the problem that the the pr- current provincial government has is they need to fix the culture that they've created. This isn't something that the the, the Saskatch- Saskatchewan NDP has created. They've been in government for over a decade, sixteen years it's not it's not the fault of 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 the saskatchewan ndp they've created this system and they need to fix it they while it may not be the fault of the saskatchewan ndp uh, i was at suma as well and i heard the the speeches from premiers mo and minister mcmorris the minister of local governance if government if i'm not mistaken is or government relations sorry 
yeah. so many different ministers of municipal affairs across this province. I can never keep them straight. They still bring up the Saskatchewan NDP and their time in office. Um, do you still hear that at the door or are people when they're talking to you saying this government needs to fix these issues? It's no longer 16 years ago, government issue. It's their issue. When when those decisions were made, I, I think I was deciding between like the red plate or the blue plate of what my supper would be on. I was a kid. I was a child. The NDP has changed. But I will tell you something is when they talk about the same old NDP, the, when it was the same old NDP, you did not have to worry about whether there was nurses and doctors in your healthcare care systems. You did not have to worry about whether teachers and education systems were, were there to support your children uh, in, in their primary and secondary school. The, these were the, the core fundamental principles that the NDP were founded on. They they worked on delivering the best systems possible in Saskatchewan. We were exporting curriculums. We were doing good work um, under the Saskatchewan NDP. So for me, how that's translated to the doorstep when when they want to start talking about um, about the the record of the NDP. Uh, I, I'm not I've never been a part of the Saskatchewan NDP government, and I'm hoping that through hard work and determination, listening to people and being and working on action plans to actually deliver the things that we're hearing on the doorstep to the people that will be able to form that government and be able to provide the services that they are desperately asking for in especially in northern Saskatchewan. Do the people of Cumberland feel like they're being heard by this provincial government? Because you were right, the current MLA is a Saskatchewan NDP. Uh, he's been in the position for, I believe, three terms now, if I'm not mistaken, even a little bit longer. Do they feel like they have a voice in this government or do they feel like they're just being ignored? Because you talk about the education system, you talk about the NORTEP, and it sounds like, and I could be wrong here, and I know I'm going to get nasty emails for asking this question. So if you do, send it to me and I'll happily file it away in the correct location. How do you change that? How do you you see yourself in making the government, if you are a critic or in opposition, making sure that the people of Cumberland are being heard by this government, or if you're in government, that they feel like they have a voice in a Saskatchewan NDP government? In in, in the in the role as, as MLA and through the work that the Saskatchewan NDP has done, to me, has always been one of building a party of people and building a party of capacity of people um when you when you look at the Saskatchewan NDP we aren't a leader only and the rest just follow the leader we we have those debates at our conventions we have the 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 tough conversations within the party on what is the best way forward and for me when we have the the, dis, the discussions on on how we deliver from Cumberland whether that be in government or as a critic, obviously, when you're in government, you control the levers of power. Your job is to now work within your caucus to be able to bring things to your constituency, whether or or into your ministry. And that's that's something that I have to learn. I'm I, I'm not a like I said. I've I've worked in government municipally, but that's not partisan. I, I don't understand all the inner workings of partisan politics and the caucus and how those things work. But when you you're think you're ready for it, sorry, I hate to interrupt, but do you think you, yeah, you no can worries. handle, do you think you could handle provincial partisan politics? Because I've seen nasty partisanship that is sweeping our nation right now, where you are literally, if you're not with us, you're against us. And if you're against us, we're going to make sure people know you're against us. Are you prepared for that as a municipal councillor who? Sometimes it can also it can seem like it's kumbaya and everyone gets along and we don't care if you're a green or a blue or a red or an orange. We just want the best for our community where partisanship is sometimes nasty. I I honestly believe that there's going to be some people that are going to be nasty. Um, there's going to be people that have supported me municipally that will not support me provincially because of the party that I'm choosing to to put my name uh, behind. And, and to me, I've always believed that all people care about majority of the same things. We want to see less homelessness. 
We want to see more people with economic opportunity. We want to see people to have houses. We want to see people being able to afford groceries. We want all of those same things. We just have very different wells that we're drinking from on how we are going to deliver those things to the people. And to me, that those are the conversations that I'm interested in in being involved in. And if somebody is calling me names, calling me down, saying that they disagree with me solely based on party, there's not going to be a whole lot of things that I can do to really connect with, with a person like that. But the people that are willing to have the conversation, I'm willing to listen. Whether they are a, a, a SAS party supporter, a SAS party member, Part of being an MLA is representing all the people in your constituency and understanding those those issues. And like I like I've said before, my key goal in in serving people is not that I'm going to hear one thing and speak the same thing. Um, I'm going to listen to people and I'm going to try and understand their issues. There might be certain things that we are going to be very opposing oil and water, if you will, uh, on, on, on certain issues and being able for, to, to have conversations so that they understand where I'm coming from. And I understand where they're coming from, not necessarily agreeing with one another, but we understand each other. Those are the conversations that I'm going to be looking forward to. The ones where someone, uh, is, is attacking me. I'm okay with that. Um, you know, there, there was a, a saying that I had heard before is, you know, for me, I, I go to, I go to church. Uh, I'm I'm a, I'm a Christian man, and for me, someone had had, had when I, when I was talking to them about p- potentially running for provincial politics, they they asked me the same question, um, and and for me, I I thought of you know. In in the in the world of Christianity, you know Jesus and God are are, are the, the the supreme God. They're they're the 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 best thing that has happened to 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 Earth and and the world, and not everybody on earth is a Christian and every religion believes that their God is the the best and, and they haven't gotten everybody on, on, on earth. So for me, who am I to believe that I can get everybody? I can't. All, all I can, all I can do is listen to people, understand their issues and try and deliver as best as I can to, on the, on the issues and the things that they want out of their MLA, out of their municipal counselor, or as just an advocate in the community. No matter what role I'll be playing, I want to be able to advocate for my community in the best way possible. In order to advocate for your community, in order to get elected, you have to win the nomination that's in July. Uh, I'm assuming memberships are still open to buy, if I'm not mistaken. Correct me if I'm wrong here by the time this airs, or has membership uh, sales closed for the nomination period? The uh, the nomination, I believe, is on July 8th. Uh, not, I believe. The nomination is <laughs> on July 8th, uh, and through the nomination processes, the membership sales close a month before that. So I believe it was around, I don't know if it's 28 days or 31 or whatnot, but I believe it was around like the June 8th mark. Um <laughs> Okay, so so, so so memberships have closed. So the the natural question that I would have asked if they hadn't uh, is how can people reach out and learn more about you, Jordan? Because um, I can imagine on July eighth, if you are the successful candidate, um, you will be wanting to start the actual campaign period, talking to everyone in the uh, constituency of Cumberland. How can people reach out? Is there a Facebook page? Is there a uh, email that you will be setting up? I'm assuming if you are the candidate, you'll get a SASC NDP email. But how can people reach out now to start that conversation? So that way on July 9th, you're not playing catch up. Uh yeah, I am on Facebook. Uh, so I, I do have my personal page, but I also have a, a political page that I've set up. Um, so it's just Jordan, J-O-R-D-A-N, uh, last name McPhail, M-C-P-H-A-I-L. Um, so you can you can go and look that up. Um, so just for transparency's sake, I will say the same thing I said to Jamie Martins, who's running for the Saskatchewan Party uh, MLA candidacy in uh, Martinsville, uh, I forget the last the, in her constituency. Um, you can also buy a membership, even though uh, the nomination uh, uh, membership purchases has closed. 
And a link to that will be in the show notes. So if you want to support Jordan, if you want to support the Saskatchewan NDP in the Cumberland constituency or even across the province of Saskatchewan, uh, the link to the Saskatchewan NDP membership sales will be in the show notes. So check it out. And a link to uh, Jordan's Facebook account, uh, his page will also be there as well. I'm going to end on this, Jordan. Why should you be the next? Well, well, why should you be the Saskatchewan NDP nominee for Cumberland for the next provincial election? I, I feel like I'm ready to take that uh, to take on the challenge um, of 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 being the candidate in a provincial election. Um, I've I've worked on some winning campaigns here in northern Saskatchewan. My career has taken me all across Cumberland. I've I've heard many conversations with people that are teachers and nurses and doctors, um, tradespeople all throughout our constituency. I've I've listened to them. I feel like I have a pretty good understanding of how to deliver the 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 services and and how to provide a level of advocacy on that provincial uh on the provincial scale. And and I and I feel like the amount of edu- education and experience that I've been able to gain through the opportunity of serving as a municipal councillor will be well suited into a smooth transition into being able to get my uh, get get hit the ground running uh, as as a as a candidate going into a provincial election. So um, for for all those that are that are tuning in either before or during or after the uh, the nomination uh, I always look forward to as many conversations as I can I'm I'm always available um, give give me a shout well I'm I'm more than willing to have any kind of conversation let me know what's going on in your world and I'll see if I can make uh, make any part of it better for you my last question for you Jordan is this uh, if you are the successful candidate on July 8th for the Saskatchewan NDP nomination, um, will you be still staying on as LaRange councillor, LaRange city or town councillor uh, until the next provincial election if you are the successful candidate? Uh, for me, I, I put my name forward in 2020 to serve a four-year term. Um, I told the the residents in our area that I was willing to stand for, for that election, and I knew that that meant that that was a four-year term. So I plan on staying in that role for as long as I possibly can. Uh, and serve out as long of my term as I possibly can. If I am a successful nominee, if I am a successful candidate in a provincial election, um, I, I will do as much of the work that I set out to do in the municipal sector as for as long as I am able to do so. So yes, I will. I will stay on as a municipal councillor for as long as possible, um, up and up until whatever processes either keep me there or take me away from that. Thank you both to Jamie and Jordan for coming in and sitting down and taking time out of their busy schedule during this nomination period to chat about why they're leaving the comfort of municipal politics and leveling up to provincial politics. To our viewers, thank you for tuning in and for being part of this conversation. Now, if you've enjoyed this episode, please hit the subscribe button so you can stay up to date on all our latest interviews, special episodes. We have some amazing stories coming up and you will not want to miss them. Now, if you're able to, please consider backing the show to help us continue to grow and produce high quality content like you saw today. Every little bit helps, and we appreciate your support. A link to our Patreon account is in the show notes. Now, don't forget to also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Those links are also in the show notes. And finally, as much as we love our phones and technology, let's remember to put them down and have real-life, in-person conversations with the people in our lives, even if it's just for five minutes. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time on the Cross-Border Interviews. Until then, remember... Just keep talking.